Dr. Nahari Archer is a professor of physics at the University of Memphis and the world's foremost researcher of the astronomical events described in the Mahabharat text. The Mahabharata war, the date of it, is an important milestone in the chronology of India. Traditionally, Indians have believed that the war took place about 3000 BCE. Modern scholars who have a more critical approach to the study of these epics took a different view. They did not believe the traditional view that the war took place so long ago. And they wanted to determine the date by using a variety of methods, methods based on linguistics, methods based on archaeology, um, the genealogy lists in the Puranas, and methods based on astronomy. And they came up with a plethora of dates ranging from about 5000 BC all the way up to 500 AD. Professor Acha uses a specially developed computer software program that enables him to view the night sky as it would have appeared at any time in the past. He has painstakingly reproduced the exact night sky for every reference to it in the Mahabharat. Professor Acha again. Turns out the types of astronomical phenomena referred to in the epic consist of Mohurtas, Tithis, and then eclipses comets and the conjunctions of planets with different stars and so on. In the Bhishma Parva, Vyasa meets with Dhritarashtra on the eve of the war and uh, recites to him the omens that he has seen. These omens predict the imminent war between the Pandavas and the Kauravas and the terrible events which will befall both the Kuru family and the general population. The most significant of these omens is the appearance of two fiery comets. People generally take the word graha to represent a planet, but Vyasa here specifically represents graha, simply means that any object which can grasp a star, and it can be a planet, a comet, or an asteroid. Here he specifically says that it's a comet because graha tamraruna shikho. The two grahas with uh, uh, blazing coppery red hair. No planet has blazing coppery red hair, it's only the comets which have that. So Vyasa specifically uh, refers to graha in, in uh, comets as graha. Then uh, I felt that uh, convinced that the verses in Bhishma Parva are really not incoherent, inconsistent, contradictory but in fact they form a very consistent set. Professor Acha has identified further astronomical references in two of the books of the Mahabharat, namely the Udyoga and the Bhishma Pavas. Again, these were regarded as omens of imminent disaster. These were when Saturn was at Aldebaran and Mars performed a retrograde motion near Antares. Now, the astronomical events which are common to both Udyoga Parva and Bhishma Parva are these. Saturn is at Aldebaran. Mars has performed a retrograde motion at Antares. The lunar eclipse in the month of Kartika, which occurs at uh, Pleiades, is followed by a solar eclipse near Antares. So, I searched for the years between 3500 BCE to about 500 CE, a range of 4000 years. In this, there are 137 such conjunctions where um, Saturn is at Aldebaran. Here we see Saturn's transit at Aldebaran. It is an event which is even today considered by Indian astrologers to be associated with great wars and violent events. The last transit of Saturn at Aldebaran was in 2001 AD, the year of ground zero. Saturn's retrogression seemingly predicting the exact month, September. Professor Acha again. And then I searched for those years in which Mars would perform a retrograde motion near Antares. Now, Mars does that in about its synodic period, it's about 680 days. So I searched for a period of 
two and a half years on either side of each of these 137 dates. And it turns out that this reduces the set of dates from 137 to just 17. And then I look for those years where there is a lunar eclipse in uh, the month of Kartika that is near Pleiades. And this reduces the set from 17 to just 2. These two years identified by Professor Acha were 2183 BC and 3067 BC. I thought I could use a solar eclipse to eliminate one of those, but it turns out on both of these days the lunar eclipse is followed by a solar eclipse which occurs in near Antares. In 2183 BCE, the winter solstice occurs in the waning phase of the moon, Krishna Panchami. And in 3067 BCE, it occurs in the waxing phase, and we want the waxing phase. So this is one way to eliminate that this 3067 BCE is the year of the war. Uh, for the 2183 BCE, to satisfy that 64 days between those two intervals, the war must have started on an Amavasya, or the new moon day. And we have definite information from the epic that the war did not start, or could not have started on an Amavasya, because on the 14th day of the war, they break all rules of war. The war continues into night, and they break, they break only when the moon rises and the wee hours of early in the morning. Now, if the war had started on an Amavasya, the 14th day would have been in the waxing phase, and the moon would rise early in the evening and not early in the morning. Moreover, a careful study of the epic yields data about a third eclipse in October 3067 BC, which follows the solar eclipse at an interval of 13 days, just as the epic describes. The evidence presented by Professor Acha overwhelmingly pinpoints 3067 BC as the year when the great battle described in the Mahabharat took place. Detailed examinations of the astronomical references mentioned in the Mahabharat show that they were based on real astronomical events that actually took place and are not a writer's imaginary description. Because the astronomical dates and events described in the Mahabharat have been authenticated by modern scientific method, it is reasonable to conclude that the Mahabharat itself is also a factual description of events that actually took place.